Hi, I'm Sandy Lane. I'm from the Salem, Virginia Veterans Affairs Medical Center. And I am in charge of the horticulture therapy program there and also the vocational programs. And before I get started, I'm just curious about our makeup of people in here. Um, is anyone in vo rehab? Through the VA? Uh, okay, okay. Um, who else do we have? I know we have a, an agribility person. Uh, okay. The Farmer Veteran Coalition. Okay. Um, I've been with the VA for um, about 12 years. I was, I feel like I was destined to be in horticulture. My father was a World War II veteran who gardened to relax when he got home from work. He, um, I was his gardening buddy. We grew tomatoes, we grew too many tomatoes, so I set up a stand in the front yard and became quite the entrepreneur, and then we started selling tomato plants, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, I'm gonna tell you about our horticulture therapy program, and um, horticulture therapy programs at VA hospitals are, all look so different, so I'm gonna be giving you a lot of ideas, um, different, programs work for different hospitals, but there's so many things that you can do, and a lot of it has to do with where you're located, who your veterans are, and that sort of thing. Oops, it's not going forward. Hang on a minute. Check one more thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to be talking about not just horticulture therapy, but various aspects of nature that have healing powers. I've been heavily involved in a research group that is um, studying th how gardening helps people heal faster and just the, the different effects of, um, of horticulture on people. Horticulture therapy in general is defined as the use of plants and gardens for human healing and rehabilitation. There's a lot of research out there that shows the value of horticulture therapy for people with physical, mental, emotional, and social disabilities. And of course plants are non-threatening and non-discriminating so it's easy to be successful. And studies have shown that success with plants lead to success in other aspects of our lives, and this is important for individuals whose disabilities or limitations might hinder their accomplishments in other pursuits. This is our main greenhouse. It was built with a grant about 14 years ago. Um, this is where we do all our production and some of our sales, and then we, we move things outside because we do have a pretty limited area, so a lot of our sales area is outside. Um, that greenhouse is um, 90 by 45 and then we have I'll show you a smaller greenhouse that we have and then we have a couple acres outside what is this okay, okay. Um, th these are some of the things we do we grow and sell plants we plant and maintain all of the flower beds on the medical center grounds. We provide flower arrangements and plants for special events, and the veterans do all of the work. Uh, we do most of the Christmas decorating at the hospital. We, we do activities with inpatients on the various wards. We do garden crafts, both uh, crafts from things that we've grown and then art for the garden. And this is really important in our um, kind of the off season so that we have work for people to do year round. Um, community engagement is something I'm going to talk about later that is something that enables you to do a lot of the things you do in a horticulture therapy program with minimal resources. Um, our veterans assist the grounds crew with landscape installation and maintenance and then we create therapeutic and restorative garden areas. Horticulture therapy is nothing new. Um, 
This was in the 1920 New York Times. It w advertised a program at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden to train World War I veterans to become estate gardeners. Now this is our, one of our older greenhouses. We have two greenhouses like this, and these were built after World War II as a rehabilitation for World War II veterans. And a lot of the work was done by volunteers from garden clubs. They worked with the occupational therapists and the recreation therapists um, to rehabilitate the um, inpatient veterans. So some of the benefits of horticulture therapy are it improves self-esteem, improves social skills, vocational skills, problem-solving skills, tolerance and coping skills. Um, it increases opportunity for choice making because when you think about being in a hospital setting you don't really have a lot of choices as a patient and so that's really important and also independence it results in increased function and community re-entry this is um, our shade house it's a cold frame that was built by one of the veterans in our program and in the winter time we cover it with with white plastic to protect the plants inside in the summertime we cover it with shade cloth but this is a good example of the problem solving um, it took the veteran about a week to build it but he comes back every year to see us and you know we find out what's going on in his life the last time he came with his new bride and this is such a source of satisfaction for him to come back and see this that he did back 10 years ago when he was in our program Vocational horticulture, a lot of people think you're training people to work in a greenhouse or in a nursery. At, at our facility, that's not what it is at all. We're trying to improve general work habits. Um, we focus on attendance and punctuality, getting along with others, uh, teamwork concept, problem solving, conflict resolution, um, perseverance, you know, not giving up on a task, learning new skills, Customer service is a big part of our program because the public comes in to buy plants from us. And so the veterans wait on the customers. And one of the advantages of that is, I don't know if you've ever worked in a garden center, but most people who come to buy plants are happy people and they're in a good mood. You know, they want, to, they want flowers. So um, it's always a very positive experience. We have very few negative experiences with our customers and it's, it's helps the veterans um, as far as their socialization. And then it often, we can turn a disability into an ability. We look at, when a veteran comes into our program, we look at what are they good at and what do they have trouble with, and then try to find tasks that they can do and be successful at in spite of their disability. Um, we recently had a retired florist ask if he could volunteer at our greenhouse to teach the veterans how to do flower arrangements. And of course, at first, m most of the veterans we have right now are male, and it was like, oh, we don't want to do this girly stuff. And so we said, well, you have to. And so it turned out that some of them were really, really good at it. And JR here is my number one floral arranger right now. And he has even done weddings. He's gotten that good. He just really, he's very artistic. He never knew he was artistic. And floral design is one of those things where, you know, you can color outside the lines. And so he's just, you know, that's something in his life that he's been really successful at. These are some of the challenges that our, um, our patients face when they come into our program. Uh, we, we're part of the mental health service line for our VISN, which is our geographical area of VA hospitals. Um, the majority of the veterans who come into our program have been homeless and they come to us through the substance abuse program. Not all of them, but that's, that's the bulk of our patients. So in addition to having been homeless, usually for a long time, they have a history of substance abuse and then they may have any or many of these other conditions, depression, schizophrenia, PTSD, traumatic brain injury, maybe bipolar, um, borderline personality disorder, anxiety and panic disorders, and cognitive impairment. The problem is we don't know that when they come to us. So a big part of what we do 
is try to figure out what's going on. Why has this veteran not been able to stay employed? Um, you know, why do they have trouble uh, socializing? So the veterans come to us and we, we get a referral, we put them to work, and then we just kind of see, see what happens. Um, we ob observe and assess based on you know, how the veteran is working at the greenhouse. We're evaluating the veteran's readiness for competitive employment, but then we're also looking at behavioral barriers that might prevent success in the workplace. Um, things like lack of concentration, not being able to focus, uh, poor memory when you have to remind somebody day after day how to do the same task, um, lacking social skills, unable to communicate effectively, Im impulsive, uh, leaving the work site to, you know, the second an idea pops into their head, they have to go do it. Uh, anxiety, afraid to try something. The floral design was a good example of that. You know, uh, some of the people had to be coaxed into it a couple of times before they would give it a try. Um, irritability, argumentative, angry, isolating, avoiding working with others, and then um, um, physical disabilities, pain, hearing loss, vision problems, and you know, the list goes on. So what, while the veterans are working, this is, um, this is one of our veterans planting mums. One of the things we notice is some people can't do the teeny tiny detailed work of transplanting seedlings, but they might be fine handling big pots and big plugs. So, you know, we, we want to give the veteran a task that he'll be able to be successful at. So we have a collaborative approach. The veterans initially are referred by a clinician, a social worker, uh, a doctor, a psychiatrist, who thinks that they would benefit from our program. And so then, while the veteran's working at the greenhouse, we observe and offer feedback to whoever referred them and their other, um, their other, uh, the other members of their team. Um, and then we determine, you know, are there other diagnostic services needed? Is there other treatment needed? Um, as the treatment progresses, then we just kind of see what's going on, offer feedback sometimes to whoever is counseling the veteran as to what we're seeing, and then hopefully in the end we'll have recovery and rehabilitation. Here's an example of some of the detail work that uh, this is transplanting seedlings of parsley. We do, um, most of our plants we grow from either seeds, plugs, cuttings. Um, we do a lot of perennials from divisions that we buy in. So, you know, when you're planting seeds, it's really very delicate work. So then af after, I uh, said so we evaluate for additional services. Some of the services that a veteran might be referred for are a neuropsych evaluation if we're seeing um, some cognitive problems. Anger management is, that's something that we frequently refer people to. And then when they go to anger management, we find out, oh, there was trauma that has never been addressed. This is why they're so angry. And so, you know, it's a long process that kind of to draw out what's been going on all these years that has caused the veteran to be in the position he's in right now, you know, unemployed, homeless. Um, sometimes substance abuse screening, um, pain management, we have a lot of different programs for that, and then evaluations for other physical problems. Okay, that's all the technical stuff. Now I'm going to show you some of the projects that we do. Um, we often contract to grow plants for uh, the city of Salem, for the local colleges, for landscapers. Um, we had a landscaping contract at the D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia, where we, uh, when it was first being built, we installed most of the flower beds and then did all the maintenance. We, we went once a week and we weeded all the flower beds. It was really fun. Um, this year, this might be a screwball idea, but I had to try it because I noticed all these chestnut acorns hitting, chestnut oak acorns hitting my car this fall. 
and we are losing oak trees left and right on our campus. We have a big, beautiful campus. It's like a college, and some of the trees are over 100 years old, and, you know, they're just getting old or they're being damaged by storms. So no one plants oak trees anymore. So we, the veterans, went out and s had them start collecting acorns and bring back the acorns and the leaves from the tree that th they found the acorns under. And so um, we're planting acorns and we're hoping that we can uh, restore some of the oak trees on the grounds. I know we won't get to see, you know, oak trees this size, but someone will benefit from them someday. And they understand, you know, what a good thing it is they're doing to help, help restore that. Um, for some reason, I couldn't find any pictures of our moms, but um, I know some people here are interested in possibly starting a horticulture therapy program. This is the, um, the Lions, New Jersey VA. Robert Simonofsky called me about maybe eight years ago, and he was a manual arts therapist who had just been given the greenhouse, and he didn't know what to do. And he's one of these people that y he can just like take off with something. He's Radar O'Reilly and, you know, he, he gets everything donated. He sends me things that he gets donated. But um, they're really close to New York City. And so he has started with different crops. He started with mums and they way outsell us now. He's just, you know, he, each thing he tries, he's really good at because he keeps it narrow. The, a narrow scope and um, you know he'll add one crop this time of year and try new things and um, this is he, and he always sends me pictures when the plants are on sale so this is his mum crop this year um, this is our poinsettia crop not not quite ready yet and then just some more of the poinsettias we don't grow a lot of them because we're so limited as to heated space but we do fill up our greenhouse with them and so many people aren't growing poinsettias anymore because it's it's very expensive to produce and we have steam heat that's just part of the whole VA complex so it's not really a consideration for us so um, our, we find that our market is increasing each year and we can bump our prices up. Um, this is a raised bed gardening project. This is kind of outside of the vocational program, but we also do projects with some of the different units on the hospital. PRRC is Psychosocial Rehabilitation and Recovery. And essentially, it's veterans who have pretty severe mental illness. They come, it used to be called day treatment, and they would come and just have play pool and have something to do all day. Well, they've, they've redefined the program and now it provides a lot more activities um, and the veterans are very much involved in the activities they do and they wanted to have a gardening group. So um, because so many of them are uh, walking with a cane or a walker or in wheelchairs, we needed to have raised beds. and. I have a handout with the actual, all the ingredients and instructions for the raised beds. But one of the veterans in their program built the raised beds. We did eight of them. And they're made out of cedar. Um, they're two feet high, four feet wide, and eight feet long. And then we filled them with a mix that is used for square foot gardening, which is very rich, so you can put the plants real close together. Um, it's, it's got peat moss, cow manure, vermiculite, worm castings, and topsoil. And of course, depending on what's available to you in, at a good price, you know, you can change that around. But um, the worm castings were kind of expensive, so we ended up using a lot more cow manure. And then this is um, in the spring after they planted lettuce and spinach, cabbage, broccoli, onions. And then they entered their vegetables in the, in the um, city or county fair and won a blue ribbon. And in addition to doing this, they host picnics every year now. And they invite, they, they want to give back to other, um, the community and other people in the hospital. So with the vegetables they've grown, once or twice a year we have a picnic and we'll use as much as we can 
from the garden, um, potato salad, uh, you know, of course we have a cookout with hamburgers and hot dogs, but all the, you know, tomatoes, onions, everything you can think of, lettuce to put on the hamburgers, all of that is from what they've grown. And here's some of the gardening group after they just finished picking some onions. And this is um, another veteran enjoying a pepper and on the left is Louise Spencer. She's a, what's called a peer support counselor and she works very closely with these veterans and it was her idea to start this project and she pretty much works with them on a daily basis maintaining the gardens. And it was so successful that the substance abuse program wanted to do the same thing. In fact, they were stealing tomatoes from the PRRC boxes, so <laughs> we thought, well, okay, let's just give them their own boxes. So the same veteran who built the other ones built these, and this, this is being used as part of a research project to see if gardening helps reduce stress and reduce cravings for, um, for alcohol and drugs. So we don't have the results yet. We've just kind of wound down the, the first season um, as the growing season ended. But this is Louise and her grandson and then one of the veterans. And that's just another picture of their garden right at the beginning of the season. And then that's um, the bush cucumbers really lend themselves well to this type of, um, to you know, growing in pots. And I mean, we were harvesting cucumbers in no time at all. And then at the bottom right hand corner is a stevia plant. That was one of the most popular plants we had there because you know, stevia is an, uh, a s natural sweetener and the leaves are just super sweet when you taste them and everybody just had to try it and you know, try, would, then they try putting it in their coffee and it was just you know, a nice educational opportunity as was most of the garden. You know, they learned about um, cabbage worms and um, and powdery mildew and um, all different kinds of herbs and how they tasted and what foods you use them in. Um, so in our off season we have to do other projects because we don't want to just tell people we don't need you anymore go home. So we um, we find that lots of times we just we get ideas from observing nature and one year the veterans wanted to build a scarecrow and we didn't realize this when we made this nice head on the scarecrow that the squirrels would enjoy it too. And we call this who's eating whom. <laughs> and the VA has, um, around Halloween, they have what's called a country store. It's a fundraiser for voluntary service and they have a pumpkin carving contest. And the greenhouse has won almost every year since this really um, talented physician's assistant retired and, <laughs> and we took over the contest. But this was, a, this was a angry little boy. And then this year we had Jurassic squash. And um, then we also make flower arrangements for them to sell. And this is made in a Jaredale squash. And you just carve out, you know, scoop out the squash, put oasis in it. We usually line them with plastic trash bags. And then just, you know, make your arrangement in the squash. Then we do bunches of these little arrangements in Jack B. Little pumpkins. And this is an activity that we do all over the hospital with the patients once we do the knife part and have the pumpkins ready. And we can take it up on any ward. Uh, doesn't matter how they stick the flowers in the oasis. Everybody has fun. And then they have something they can give to a special nurse or a family member when they come visit. Um, we also, in the fall, we grow ornamental kale and cabbage, and one year we had some left over, so we strung Christmas lights on them and sold them as a holiday decoration. Um, our, our clay pot people have been one of our biggest successes. Uh, there was a veteran named Dawson who was, he was pretty artistic, and I saw um, clay pot scarecrow in a Lowe's magazine, you know, they send out that monthly magazine, and I said, do you think you can make one of these? Well, he made one, and then it just, you know, everybody wanted to buy one, and then he wanted, but he got bored. He doesn't like to ever do the same thing twice. So we, I started looking for unusual pots and bringing him the pots and let him just be inspired by what he saw in the materials he had. And so this was one of his, it's the nerdy boy with his dog. 
Then he did um, alligators, uh, an owl bird feeder, and this is one of the three blind mice. And then a staff member wanted, um, commissioned this for his daughter's wedding. So um, you can do just about anything with clay pots, we discovered. And that's an old farmer that he made. And this, you know, in the winter time, these are great projects because it keeps people busy. Um, another thing that you can do in horticulture therapy with minimal materials, all you need is some old telephone books, is press flowers. And we, um, we've done so many different activities, both with patients on the ward and things that we've made and sold at the greenhouse. Um, but you can do leaves or flowers, uh, ferns press really well. And these are some of the things you can do with pressed flowers. Um, you can glue them to a pillar candle and then melt paraffin in a crock pot so it doesn't get too hot. And then you can dip the candles in that and it puts a coating around the flowers. Um, you can glue them to gourds. Uh, make cards, make greeting cards, and then we've made a lot of bookmarks and we laminate them after. Um, you just need to make sure that everything's dried really good before you laminate them. And you can Google pressed flower uh, crafts and find all kinds of other things. Um, we grew a lot of gourds one year and we had a veteran who was one-fourth Native American. And he had been, in his youth, he had been an, just an unbelievable artist. He had a portfolio that he would carry with him and show everybody pictures of what he used to be able to do. But his hands trembled so bad that he couldn't do it anymore. And so he saw inspiration in our gourds and he made all of these different things, a mask, a um, couple bowls, and he just you know, really got inspired to do things again because he could still do things without quite the detail he had been doing before. And then we started doing a lot with concrete and he really enjoyed that too. He made this bird bath using a, a piece of driftwood and then um, the concrete. Um, what we do is we make a mold out of sand in a wash tub. We pour our concrete <coughs> mixture in and it's a hyper tufa mix. Oh, you're probably familiar with that, but we leave out the peat moss. And then we take leaves and we press it on top. And one of the easiest things to use is an elephant ear leaf because it's huge and it has very prominent veins. And you can see the one in the back, the gray one next to that bed, that was done with an elephant ear leaf. Um, and then you peel the leaf off after about eight hours. And then after it's, the concrete has had a couple days to get hard and to cure, then you can take it out of the sand. And so, uh, and also concrete crafts are cheap. I mean, concrete doesn't, we don't use actual concrete mix. We use Portland cement, masonry cement, um, sand, and perlite. But a bag of Portland cement is about seven or eight dollars. So you can make a bunch of stuff. Um, stepping stones is another thing that we've done by pressing the leaves into the um, concrete. And we use the saucers, the clear saucers that you buy to put under plants as our mold. And then we got into fountains after the bird baths. We thought, ooh, this would be really pretty with water trickling over the edge. So we uh, started making sets of three with the, um, the water coming up to the top leaf and then trickling down over the, uh, the others. Um, this is Frank. And he became obsessed with four-leaf clovers last spring and found 112 of them on the VA grounds. He pressed them and made this picture, and he entered this in the Salem Fair and won a blue ribbon. Um, but he was so proud of it, we said, you know, why don't we frame this and present it to the director? And so this is Frank presenting his artwork to the director, and uh, the director's staff was very pleased to have it. They said they need all the luck they can get. <laughs> and so it's hanging in the director's suite now. Um, if I have a few minutes left, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, therapeutic gardens and landscaping. Over 40 scientific studies demonstrate that viewing nature lowers psychological and physiological stress, it reduces the need for pain medication, it reduces aggression and anxiety and depression, it shortens hospital stays, and it increases patient satisfaction. Now this is just looking at nature. 
being in a garden provides restoration from stress in three to five minutes. It results in increased exercise, increased vitamin D absorption. It improves sleep patterns, especially in uh, dementia and Alzheimer's patients. And uh, in one research study, it actually caused, it, they noticed that people who used the garden more had less falls while they were in the hospital. And that it, it improves the quality of life for chronic and terminally ill patients. And just a little aside about this, has anybody heard of forest bathing? Okay, this is really cool. In Japan, they have this thing called forest bathing. They've been researching it since the 1980s and they have found that spending time in the forest, it's not really any kinky thing or anything, it's um, <laughs> you know, walking in the forest. Spending time in the forest actually it causes an increase in what they call natural killer cells that help the immune system fight cancer. And they think that part of it could be a result of some of the aromatics that the trees release that help protect the trees from um, disease in insects, but you know the other part of it is just being in nature and the effects of being in the forest. The the effects on the the blood composition last 30 days after one trip to the forest. So um, I have on my handout a link to some of their research. The Japanese have really done a lot of research on this. They even have an institute of forestry that is promoting this, and it's. Um, it's a really interesting concept and just supports the whole idea of how therapeutic it is to be in nature. Um, real quickly, I talked about community engagement before, and uh, there's a lot of interest in creating therapeutic gardens, and we've created several of them, and we've had a lot of volunteers who come to us and want to do something. And Creating a garden is a perfect project for an Eagle Scout or Master Gardeners or just any number of volunteers who might want to come volunteer at your facility. Um, our first idea was we wanted an area where when the younger veterans came with their spouse and children, they could have a place to go and relax during the daytime. So we started with some kids from um, private school who wanted to do a day of service and they came out and planted bulbs and then they mulch the bulbs and if you ever want to get mulching done get a bunch of third and fourth graders <laughs> with buckets and I mean I've never seen mulch put down so fast <laughs> and there's the end of the day and then the following spring that's what the bulbs look like and then we had a group of senior Girl Scouts who wanted to do a project so they came along after that and expanded that garden and they did they landscaped around the gazebo they did a Zen garden um, they did a butterfly garden. They did some vertical planters um, that you fill the planter with soil and you can garden either standing up or sitting and uh, it opens up so you can clean it out but the, the plants grow vertically. They also did a giant checkerboard and then this was the gazebo that they landscaped and then a year later it, all the plants had really filled out. Um, this was another Girl Scout troop who worked side by side with the veterans to landscape a, a POW MIA memorial area and the veterans loved this. I mean it was good for everybody and the girls enjoyed it so much that they decided they were going to devote the whole year to veterans and they did fundraisers and they worked with voluntary service and they um, raised money to buy a bench for our garden. And then the, um, this is a veteran who was in our program decided he wanted to work with kids to try to make a difference in their lives and so he got a job after he left us working with um, youth groups and every year he brings them back to come visit the greenhouse and so here they are playing checkers and here they are after learning what worm castings are. <laughs> uh, and then they, um, we let them all make a project to take home with them, and take home to their mom. And I loved his t-shirt. It said, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> and the veterans will help with the projects. If they want to work with the kids, they do. If they don't, you know, they go about their regular stuff. 
Um, and then the last thing I want to show you is for our 75th anniversary, we wanted to plant a giant flag, 60 by 90 feet. So we planted 12,000 pansies and we had 50 third and fourth graders from Faith Christian School who came out on a cold day in October, not October, it was I guess September, to plant these. Well, it was a great idea, but the deer started eating them and it kept raining and they all got botrytis and it looked awful for the 75th anniversary. But the following spring, all of a sudden in April, it just took off. So um, that's the end of my presentation. We're a little bit out of time, but I, I wanted to mention that uh, Sandy's going to be back right after lunch. People want to talk more in depth about this and how you might start a program and if you have specific questions about what they've been doing, it would be a good time. Does anybody have any quick questions before we go to lunch about what you shared here if you're not able to come back? Sandy, you started at uh, slide number one and then you, you kind of passed through it. And the very first thing that was on your uh, dealt with vocational program. I know, it. my slides somehow got mixed up. Let me see. It was slide number one. It was, I th maybe it somehow ended up number one and it was supposed to be, I think, the third one. I think it might be, right. It'll catch up. It's that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. Um, I guess that was key to the whole thing. We're, we're primarily part of the CWT and the incentive therapy programs. Um, if you're from a VA hospital, compensated work therapy is a back-to-work um, competitive employment program. Um, and then incentive therapy is more pre-vocational. And it all ties in with the, you know, observing and seeing what kinds of, um, what kinds of treatment somebody might need to get more on the vocational track. And I do have two handouts. One just ha has, um, if you are interested in horticulture therapy, the very first book on the list is an excellent book with the really, you know, the specifics of working with different populations. And then the other handout is just on how to do those raised beds. But Thank there's you. a lot of links to stuff. Again, uh, lunchtime is right now, but then uh, if you check the schedules, there'll be another opportunity to talk to Sandy later today. Thank you. Thank you.